The Resurrection, Sermon 2 by John G. Lake Christianity, through Jesus Christ, stepped into the arena of the world as a challenger. The Son of God, just as the ancient athlete did, threw down his gauntlet on the ground and challenged the religions of the world to take it up. Heaven's challenge still stands. Sophisticated religions, uncertainties, philosophic illusions and delusions have claimed the world's interest. But heaven's challenge stands just as vigorously today as it ever did. So long as the blessed word of God lives in the world, so long shall that challenge endure. Other religions were old, long-whiskered, and gray-haired when Jesus Christ entered the arena. Christianity was a babe among the ancient religions. Zoroaster had lived, taught his purification by fire, and worshipped the sun, the fire god. Zoroaster could conceive only one possibility of purifying the human soul, a process of fire cleansing. There could be no other. That was the conclusion of the ancient world. Buddha followed about 500 BC, but with no better hope than Zoroaster. His ideal was oblivion, personality lost, individuality gone, merged into the great whole without distinctive consciousness, vacuity. Mohammed came at a later period, about 550 years after Jesus Christ. His heaven was a harem, the possibility of everlasting sensuality. Then in modern days, Mormonism followed with its spiritual marriages and dream of eternal polygamy all abominable to the spirit of the Son of God and as unlike Christianity as anything could be. Into the muck and the mess and the darkness came the Son of God with a glory of holiness, with divine righteousness, with heavenly purity, with angelic estate, never ceasing consciousness, perpetuated individuality, life evermore, resurrection from the dead, man's enjoyment of God eternally, yourself a son of God, like the son of God himself, in his likeness immortalized. Heaven stood aghast, earth stood aghast, and hell stood aghast when Jesus Christ stepped into the arena. Could he accomplish the thing he talked about? Was there power in heaven or on earth to revolutionize the nature of man, change the darkness, take away sin, and obliterate the night from his soul? Could the personality of man be preserved? Were Christians going to die just like others die? Did he truly possess eternal life? Could he impart it to others? Was Jesus Christ a boaster or a savior? <laughs> Christianity did not come to the world to apologize for its existence or to beg a place to live. It came as heaven's champion. It has the champion soul. <laughs> Christianity did not come to the world to apologize for its existence or to beg a place to live. It came as heaven's champion. It has the champion soul. Genesis 3.15, we hear it. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That champion consciousness is in the soul of the Christian. That champion consciousness 
as in the soul of the Christian. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Being born of God, he is champion. The Christian is the champion of the Son of God, and a demonstrator of his salvation. He is the champion of God. He cannot be anything else. 1 John 4, 17, As he is, so are we in this world. In our day, we have almost come to the place where the world is being taught to believe that the message of Christianity is morality. Be decent. Don't act like a pig. Keep the beast under control. That is about the message of modern Christianity. Jesus Christ never wasted his time establishing mere morality. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, declared immortality, immortality, to be the goal of Christianity. Its attainment, the purpose of God for you and me. John 6, 40, I will raise him up at the last day, said Jesus. John 10, 28, I will give him eternal life. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, the dead in Christ shall rise first. No religion in the world except Christianity ever suggested resurrection its declared intent. <laughs> no religion in the world except Christianity ever suggested resurrection its declared intent. Who in the world was ever bold enough to suggest a resurrection? What dying creature could? It was only the Son of God himself out of heaven with the knowledge of immortality and eternal life that would dare to suggest such a climax for mankind. If there were no other evidence of Jesus Christ's eternality but that, it would be sufficient. 1 Timothy 6.16 Who only, Jesus Christ, who only hath immortality. John 1.4 In him was life, and the life was the light of men. John 11.26 He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Mark 14.58 Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. O oh, marvelous Redeemer! <laughs> Christianity stands today absolutely unique. No other religion of earth has our hope or our consciousness or our power. I fear sometimes that we moderns somehow have lost the spirit of original Christianity. We have lost the smash of it. We have lost the charge of it. We have lost the overcoming of it. We are begging the devil for a place in the world, apologizing for our faith in God, trying to conform our religion to the mind of the world. Ah, but salvation is the transforming power of God. Jesus Christ looked upon the world, which was saturated with sin, shaped in iniquity, and said that the task was not too great for him. The biggest contract in this universe was undertaken back in the eternal ages, when at one time in the council of the Godhead, Jesus Christ, the responsible creator, became the responsible savior, and settled the sin question by offering himself as the savior of the world. Oh. He wrought our redemption. John 5, 24 He that believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. His dying on the cross was the first incident in connection with our redemption, but it was not the conclusive incident. If Jesus had died on the cross and the process of salvation had ceased then, there would not be a redeemed sinner today. His dying on the cross was the first incident in connection with our redemption. 
but it was not the conclusive incident. If Jesus had died on the cross and the process of salvation had ceased then, there would not be a redeemed sinner today. David was sitting on the mountainside one afternoon watching his sheep and his spirit traveled out into the regions of God. He began to observe as a seer does the things that were taking place and he broke out shouting, Oh, Psalm 68, 18, Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Oh, Psalm 24, 7, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory is coming in. Oh, that is the Christ of God, and that is his salvation. There was a battle of worlds. It was not a battle of earthly religions. It was the battle of every power of light and darkness and heaven and hell. Jesus Christ, the champion of righteousness and salvation, had to make good or, like the philosophers, pass into oblivion at the grave. Instead of being the life giver, he would have been just the propounder of another philosophy. Oh, the resurrection morning came. Jesus, discussing his life, said, I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. John 10, 18. He took it at his will. He commanded life. He lived and death became a captive. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was victor. Oh, none like him in all the universe. He came out of the battle with the keys of hell and of death. Revelation 1, 18. No other soul in heaven or on earth ever had such an experience. No other had ever challenged death. No other had ever taken death and hell captive. Jesus Christ stood unique in earth, in hell, in heaven. When Jesus came forth in the resurrection, something breathed and throbbed and pulsed in him that had never breathed or throbbed or pulsed before. It was the new eternal life. He used a new vocabulary. The ordinary language was not big enough. He said, Matthew 28, 18, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Who else in the universe had ever experienced such a thing? None but the Son of God. All power language is Christian vocabulary only. All power language is Christian vocabulary only. Christianity came from the heart of the glorified. Christianity is a heavenly triumph. Christianity is 100% supernatural. God possessing man. Just as God breathed the breath of life into Adam, so Jesus Christ breathed upon his disciples. If he could breathe into them this heaven-born life, they would be heaven-born like himself. If he could breathe this consciousness of triumph into them, they would become triumphant also. If they could take the deathless life of Christ, they would become deathless likewise. If they could take the deathless life of Christ, they would become deathless likewise. John 20, 22, He breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. In Peter's Pentecostal sermon, he gives a revelation that no other writer gives us. Peter's broken heart was penetrative. 
he saw into the glory. He saw Jesus ascending to the throne of God. He saw the Almighty receive him at the throne. He observed what took place, and he said, Acts 2.33, Having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which you now see and hear. Peter saw him get the eternal saving marvel for universal distribution to all mankind. Right then, Jesus became the world savior, the savior of all mankind. He now possessed the saving grace, the Holy Spirit. God had fulfilled his promise. It completed his saviorhood. It made him heaven's high priest. He qualified as high priest of things eternal. It was his right now to pour out the Holy Spirit on the world. He came to the balcony of glory and poured out the Holy Spirit on every hungry heart that was ready to receive. To receive, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. He came to the balcony of heaven and poured out the Holy Spirit on every hungry heart that was ready to receive. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit. So may you be. Then I'd like to add at the end of this, that concludes the reading of the sermon, then I'd like to add at the end of this a psalm given in tongues and interpretation by the Holy Ghost to John G. Lake at 2 a.m. June 18, 1910, Cook House, Cape Colony, South Africa. The Secret of Power, Luke 24, 49, and Acts 1, 8. He is risen, he was, he is risen, hear the cry, ringing through the land and sea and sky. Tis the shout of victory, triumph is proclaimed. O oh, heralds of God, announce it, deaths disdained. Shout the tidings, shout the tidings, raise the cry. Christ victorious, Christ victorious cannot die. For the bars of death he sundered, Satan sees that he has blundered. Oh, as the shouts of angels thundered, he is alive. Catch the shout, you earth-born mortals, let it roll till it echoes o'er the mountains from the center to the poles, that the Christ of earth and glory death has conquered. Oh, tell the story. He's the victor, he's the victor. So am I. For this reason that my ransom he has paid, I've accepted his atonement on him laid. He, the Lamb of God that suffered all for me, bore my sins, my griefs, my sickness on the tree. I am risen. I am risen from the grave of my sins, my griefs, my sickness, and the waves of resurrection life and holy power thrill my being with his new life every hour. Now the lightnings of God's Spirit burn my soul. Flames of his divine compassion o'er me roll. Lightning power of God's own spirit strikes the power of hell. God in man, oh glory, glory, all the story tell. I have proved him, I have proved him. It is true, Christ's dominion yet remaineth. Tis for you. Let the fires of holy passion sweep your soul. Let the Christ who death has conquered take control. He will use you, he will use you. Zion yet has Savior still. Christ the conqueror only waiteth.
for the action of your will. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father. Christ, the conqueror, only waiteth for the action of your will. Oh, Father, we worship you. 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 Let the fires of glory burn, Father. Oh, I worship you and I praise you. Father, I thank you that these words, the words of this sermon, the words of this tongues and interpretation, Father, this psalm given by the Spirit, oh, Father, that they are not dead letters or dead words, but they are living epistles to us. Oh, Father, those that think they are still needing power, let them see that it has been given to them in this very hour. Let them see it now, Lord. Let them see it clear. Oh, Father, let them go forth and let them proclaim the word that, Father, those in the darkness may hear. That he is risen, he is risen. All power does he have. All power has he given to those that call upon his name. Oh, in this hour, in this hour, come and be filled with his glorious power. Father, I thank you I send this word out, Lord, as seeds upon the grounds of men's hearts. Men and women, boys and girls, Father, yes, Zion does have saviors still. So, Father, commission them, empower them, fill them with your spirit, baptize them in the Holy Ghost, and, Father, send forth your laborers into the fields of harvest during these last days. And Father, I give you the praise and the glory that this word does not return void. In Jesus' name, amen.